up will be saved. committee 
because we're going to be spending some time on something called Zoom. And it's our first time as a committee to be uh, engaging in that way. And so pray for us that that, uh, that goes smoothly and creates for us a, a good pattern for not only that committee, but other committees of our church as we're in the midst of, of this uh, pandemic and, and the way in which we are responding to it to enable us to do well. Uh, please share if you are watching the video and, and expand the audience uh, and those who are able to participate and make comment, as I said. Uh, also, on uh, this channel, on this Facebook page, there will be every Wednesday at 2 o'clock a message that I will give, uh, two, three, four, five minutes uh, of a devotional, of information, of ways of, of staying connected. And Brian also uh, has told me that there are things that he is looking forward to, and maybe you'd share about that Sure. Good morning, church. Um, as some of you know, we have been doing our weekly broadcast at noon on Wednesdays. Last week we had Katie and Rich Williams, but we moved the time to 7 p.m. This week we're back to noon with an unbelievably talented Broadway vocalist, Becky Toth. Um, Becky, yeah, I know, right? I just heard, whoa. Um, <laughs> Becky just won Pittsburgh's Best Actress in the Reader's Poll last year from the Post Tribune Review. Um, some of you know how that thing works. She has appeared on all the major Pittsburgh stages, and she is going to be bringing us a delightful program. We will, this week, make sure that we post a link to give for folks who would like to help underwrite the cost of these recitals. We plan on doing these as long as we are in quarantine to keep spirits high, and um, so, so please consider donating to that. Bonnie has updated the giving page. It's quite easy. I went on last week and made a donation myself. I was done in about 30 seconds. So please feel free to contribute. Thank you. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us begin our worship with choral praise. Today's lay reader, and it's very good to be here. 
Would you please join with me in the call to worship? When I was wandering in God's creation, I did not yet know Christ, Christ is, is risen. Hallelujah. When my faith was still a question without any firm answer, Christ, Christ is, is risen. Hallelujah. When the world and all its troubles were my everyday daily bread, Christ, Christ is, is risen. Hallelujah. When I saw the confidence in others that I could not explain, Christ is risen. Alleluia. When I had enough of trouble and did not yet know the way to freedom, Christ is risen. Alleluia. When my eyes were open to understand, I at last confessed the truth. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Christ has risen. Alleluia. May God bless us one and all on this day of days. Christ has risen. Alleluia. Now we offer all our praise. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. Please now join with me in the opening prayer. Faithful God, the strength of all who believe and the hope of those who doubt, May we, who have not seen, have faith and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Scripture lesson. 
lesson today is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands? Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning. This is usually the time that we have that we speak with our children and have them gather here in front, and they're not able to be with us, and because of that, Brian, we have forgotten something that the kids always do. Light the candles. We didn't light the candles. disciples' feet in the upper room. Maybe there was a 
coin reminding us of the pieces of silver that Judas received for betraying Jesus. A, a thumbtack to remind us of the nail prints in his hands. And, and one by one, the, the teacher would pick up an egg and open it and look at the little object inside and, and would talk to the children about the story. And, and as she was talking, she picked up the next egg and it felt, it felt rather light. And she kind of peeked and saw there was nothing inside it and she worried that maybe the child would be embarrassed that they forgot to put anything in that egg. And so she set it aside and went on to the next one. Maybe it was a little stone to remind us of the stone that was rolled away over the tomb. She went one by one through all the rest of the eggs, and then the child said, Teacher, teacher, you forgot about my egg. And she didn't know quite what to say. And she said, Well, but you forgot to put anything in it. It's, it's empty. And the child beamed with delight and said, Yes, it's empty, just like the tomb on Easter Sunday morning. It's empty. And the teacher knew it at that moment. The child didn't make a mistake. The child understood perfectly the reason why we celebrate, why we sing, Alleluia, Christ is risen, Alleluia, Christ is risen indeed. May we have the same knowledge of that child, that same experience of joy, and may we take that through life and share that with others in the world who are themselves uncertain or depressed, who don't seem to have hope, and to tell them, let me tell you the story of the eggs. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks this day for this holy mystery in which, though you die, you are risen, and though we in time will die, we know that we will be with you in eternity forever and that you walk with us by the Holy Spirit, even now. All this we give you thanks for, in Jesus' name.
This morning, our sermon is entitled Faith and Doubt and Faith Again. We are at times an uncertain people. Sometimes we feel like we know what we need to know. We have assurance. We have confidence. And, and then we, <clears throat> we step out into the task that is before us. And we're not quite so sure that we know what we thought we knew. I have a couple of things here to share. This is something that I pulled out of my files from a long time ago. This uh, is one of my blue book exams from around 1990-1991. All the writing that I did for the exam, all the red there's a lot of there's a lot of red in this that the professor put on my page in this blue book exam. You open the book and you pick up your pencil and the professor says start writing and the exam begins and you open up the test booklet and suddenly you either know that you studied enough, or you wonder if you should have been watching Star Trek last night, or should have been studying instead. We know what we know, we know what we think we know, and then sometimes life intervenes, and the faith that we had in our abilities is, e is tested, and it is either rewarded or it is not. The disciples followed Jesus around for, 30, for three years after he had turned 30 and began his life of ministry, ending that ministry, we understand, when he was 33. For three years, they followed him around, they, they listened, they learned, they were at times even sent out two by two to go and to offer teaching and healing and the, the display of God's power about the community, and they, they came back rejoicing had faith. And they were told, <clears throat> the faith... Even the size of a grain of a mustard seed is enough when acted upon. And then the trials of life come, the difficulties they were to know, the upper room experiences, the, the, the fact that Jesus was talking about his death. Going through the Kidron Valley on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, the the torch bearers with their clubs and spears coming to take him away, the trial, the crucifixion, the tomb. Where was their faith in that moment? The same reason why they struggled with faith is the same reason why at times I struggled with my education. And were I to be sat down with these same questions, 30 years later, probably would not do as well, even as I did here, is because this is something of the epitome of my life. A colander, or as we call also a sieve. Times our, our lives, our knowledge, our faith can be like this sieve. You pour things into it and... and and it drops out the bottom almost as fast as you pour it in. And it's the reason why we're told to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And we're told to come daily to the Holy Spirit. Why we're told to study the scriptures. Not just once so that we can say we, we read them. But, but to be in them daily. That we're to be people of prayer. That we're to be walking with God and seeking constant communion with, with one another, which is so hard in this time. But we can do it through social media or a phone call or a letter. 
and to be in constant communion with our God because we we leak. We need to be filled generously on a daily basis. Thomas is not wrong for doubting. He was expressing his his heart's overflow, his his feeling that that just was so much a part of who he was in that moment. And you know the wonderful idea of the story is that Jesus meets us where we are. Doesn't intend to leave us where we were, but meets us where we are in that moment of doubt and offers to us some sign, some hope, some reason even for joy. Some reminder that we carry with us all the days of our lives. Can you imagine being Thomas in his later <coughs> life? That every day of his life he could remember that in his moment of doubt, God met him there and said, Here, put your finger in the nail prints and believe. Trust and know that the God of grace will come will answer you in your time of doubt, will answer you in your time of need. Maybe by some spectacular vision or understanding, and, and maybe by the goodness and kindness of, of common folks that share the pew with you on a Sunday and your daily work and life on other days. God calls us all to be one in Him calls us to faith, knows how frail we are, and meets us in that moment. May the God of all grace be praised, and may God add his blessing to the reading of this holy word. transformation of what had seemed the end into a new beginning, your turning of what had seemed the triumph of evil into the victory of love. God of the unexpected, hear our prayer. We praise you for the way that you changed lives of Jesus' followers, turning sorrow into celebration, doubt into faith, questions to answers, confusion into confidence. God of the unexpected, hear our prayer also. Forgive us that we too, like the apostles arriving in the tomb, are sometimes deceived by appearances. We make judgments on our own limited assumptions. We lose faith when life doesn't measure up to our expectations. We imagine we have all the answers and are frightened when we find we have not. We reject truths that do not fit our view of the world and then are puzzled when we cannot make sense of things. Forgive us for doubting your love, losing sight of your purpose, or questioning your power. Forgive us for ignoring your promises, for diminishing your greatness, for forgetting that your ways are not our ways and your thoughts are not our thoughts. O oh God of the unexpected, hear our prayer. We pray for those unable to make sense of the situations they find themselves in, whose hopes are shattered by the experiences of this life, who know anxiousness and fear, who are disillusioned or depressed, facing perhaps suffering, sorrow, or evil. God of the unexpected, hear our prayer. May the surprise of Easter burn afresh into their lives and our own, revealing new possibilities to life, new dimension to your love, new meaning for each day and moment. 
May this day we celebrate. Teach us to expect the unexpected. Hear our prayer in the name of the risen and victorious Christ, he who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
majesty. May we be truly thankful, O Lord, for all those persons who have been God's gift to us. May we be truly thankful, O Lord, for all those opportunities that have been given to allow our many blessings to touch the lives of others. May we be truly thankful, O Lord. Use the gifts received to transform your whole creation by the work we do here at Coriopolis United Methodist Church. Amen. We offer our prayers of thanks for those gifts that we have received. We encourage you to continue with your giving and in the variety of ways uh, that have been made available and just recently, which I have not yet tested out, the, the text message giving that Bonnie has created for us. And, uh, and we will be together again in some point making use of these plates. But I thank you, whether your giving is here or whether your giving is online or in the mail. One final word about prayer that I've been allowed to understand. When we ask you to pray, for the family and friends of uh, Margie Myers, and particularly at, at 4 o'clock that, that the service uh, or gathering is taking place, to be in prayer for them remotely. Uh, the, the gathering time at 4 o'clock is just the immediate family because of, uh, of the concerns that we have uh, and the social distancing that we're doing. But please, keep them in your thoughts, keep them in mind and in your prayers this day. Our closing hymn, number 593, Here I Am.
love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon us all evermore. Amen.